Thanks everyone for joining us today. It's, uh, I'm very, very excited for this session and um, I expect this session to be very popular. And um, my name is Sameh Bujulbain. I'm from Del Oro Group. We track market uh, and market uh, trends. And today I'm gonna talk about the hyperscale data center switch market. So as you know, the data center market is comprised of different customer segments. The challenge for us as industry analysts is that each customer segment migrates to different speeds at different times and using different topologies. That's because each customer segment has different bandwidth requirements. And since our focus today is on high speed networks, I'm gonna talk mostly about the hyperscalers. So today I'm gonna talk about three topics. First, the size of the hyperscale data center switch market. Second, their migration path to high-speed networks. And third, challenges and potential solutions when migrating to high-speed networks. So starting with this chart, this chart looks at our five-year forecast for the data center switch market. As you can see here, we do track the market in at least six customer segments. And needless to say that the top four US cloud, they are Google, uh, Amazon, Microsoft, and Facebook. The top three in China, we keep the same list. It's Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, although ByteDance is now surpassing Baidu. But for consistency, we're keeping the same list here. And as you can see, this market has been performing very, very robustly, despite supply issues. In the first half of this year, we recorded 20% growth in the market, with half of the growth in the market driven by cloud service providers. And if you look at our projections here, despite some potential slowdown, possibly in the second half of next year, that will be more pronounced in customer segments outside of the hyperscalers, uh, we believe that over the long term, this market will remain robust with nine to 10% CAGR. And we predict that by 2026, 60% of the spending on data center switching will be driven by cloud service providers, and the top four hyperscalers alone will drive 25% of the spending on, on this market. Again, I'm talking about data center switching, I'm not talking about optics. Optics are mostly excluded from this revenue picture here. So very important to note that. Now, this chart looks at the high speed attach rates by customer segment. And the point I try to make here is that the top four hyperscalers are at least two to three speeds upgrade cycles compared to the rest of the market. So in the hyperscalers, we're talking about 200 gig, 400 gig, 800 gig. And yes, those speeds are mostly deployed in breakout mode for now, but we count them as, uh, as uh, 200 gig, 400 gig, and 800 gig while the rest of the market will remain uh, for at 100 gig for, for a long time. Now, let's double click on the hyperscalers. So this chart looks at the roadmap of the hyperscalers. Some of this timeline is actual, some of it is our predictions depending based on what we know and what we hear from the e ecosystem. And the point, the first point I wanna make by showing this slide is that we not only have a divergence between the hyperscalers and the rest of the market, but even within the hyperscalers themselves, we are seeing divergence in terms of the timing of their migration to higher speeds, the choices they are making in terms of chip generations and chip implementations. So a lot of divergence we're seeing, and it's really very, very hard to even keep track of, quite frankly. Um, if you look at Google, they were the first to deploy 400 gig back in 2019 uh, in the form of 32 ports of 400 gig. Currently, they start to deploy uh, 800 gig using 25.6 T-chips. Next, uh, we believe that they will uh, deploy 1600 gig, but we expect that to happen at 200 gig lanes with 100 T-chips. Again, this is prediction, okay? Um, if you look at Amazon, they are currently deploying 400 gig with 12.8 T-chips. They decided to skip 25.6 T and wait for 51.2 T. Now, they have two options, obviously, to deploy the 51.2 T. Either they do it as 64 ports of 800 gig or as 32 ports of 1600 gig. And they have to make something very clear here. Both options are still on the table, but 
based on what we're hearing, there is slight preference now for 800 gig. That may change. Again, these roadmap are not really uh, final yet. You look at Microsoft, I want to make some clarifications at Microsoft because uh, what, what they are currently deploying 400 gig in Spine and DCI, but because they use a different class of chips there, they are not portrayed, those tiers of the network, they are not portrayed on this chart. What I'm portraying here is what Microsoft is deploying in the top of rack and leave, and, and those tiers, we don't expect to see the 400 gig adoption to materialize before 2023. And next, if you look at Meta, now Meta deploys the one new form factor in the TAR, but they are, the TAR is not portrayed here. What I'm portraying here is what Meta is deploying in the fabric, and there they deploy the 4U chassis called the mini pack with 128 ports. So with 12.8T, they were able to deploy 128 ports of 100 gig, with 25.6T, they are currently deploying 128 ports of 200 gig, and we expect them to also deploy 51.2T, but there we, we think that they will do the 64 ports of 800 gig, but each 800 gig port will be split in two by 400 so that they can keep the same 128 port radix. And so when you look at this chart, I think it's, the first observation is that each hyperscaler is following a different path, the second observation is migration to higher speeds is getting very, very challenging, okay? Now, with that as a backdrop, this is our forecast for 400 gig, 800 gig, and 1600 gig. I keep reminding uh, the audience here that, that the early deployments will be in breakout mode, but you can see that we expect the 400 gig port volume to double every year from 2019 till 2023. It will peak in 2024 and will be surpassed by 800 gig in 2025. We do believe that the 800 gig ramp will be fast driven by the availability of 800 gig optics, which are estimated to be 20 to 30% cheaper than two discrete 400 gig optics. So economics drive adoption here. Now, while there is a cost benefit for now to move to migrate, and to migrate to higher speeds as the cost per gig goes down, unfortunately, that migration, as I mentioned earlier, is getting more and more challenging. Power consumption is one of the major constraints for migration to these higher speeds. Power will limit what the hyperscalers and cloud service providers in general will be able to build and deploy in their data centers. Optics are a big part of the problem here. Optics are estimated to comprise an increasing portion of the power consumption. But optics are also a big part of the solution. Co-package optics do have the promise to lower the cost and the power compared to pluggable optics. However, the list of requirements and challenges that co-package optics have to overcome in order for them to really show clear and significant benefits over pluggables is just a long list of requirements. And so that is to say that the learning curve for co-package optics for the customers as well as the suppliers is very, very steep. And that's why we're seeing some hyperscalers and some suppliers starting the work on co-package optics although we believe that it will be a few years before we get to material adoption. So it's all about learning before it's too late. And uh, I'm sure uh, some of the other speakers will have uh, deeper insights on the package objects, so I will uh, stop here. Hopefully I'm still in, uh, within my 10 minutes. And uh, if you have questions, I think I can take a couple of questions. If not, I will hand it over to the next speaker. Thank you. Question? Yes. Hey. Thank you very much for differentiating between gigabits per second and gigabits per second. Absolutely. Really <laughs> Absolutely, Steve. <laughs> so I want I I make that clear every time I present my roadmap and my thoughts about uh, high speeds. So thank you. Very much. Thank you.
questions? If not, I will hand it over to the next speaker. Thank you very much.